Hi everybody, this is an introduction to the Unity Network and our website is unitynet.info and the purpose of the Unity Network is to network with all peoples and social movements to help solve the greatest problems of the 21st century. So, you know, my name's Jay, I've been working very hard for the last decade um, to help solve a lot of our, our social problems and it is extremely, extremely difficult. Um, and so for the last three years, I've been putting together a whole new visual and strategic model that I feel is extremely important to bring to this world. And so that's what I'm here to explain. So the foundation to the Unity Network <clears throat> is Unity Theory. So first I'm going to go over a little bit about the context of Unity Theory and make sure we have the broadest general understanding. Um, on a foundational level, we're talking about integrated comprehensive unity theory for style transformation. And that's basically what unity theory is. You know, and it's, um, you know, understanding the foundation of it, you know, why we're doing this is really the whole context of numerous, numerous different global crises that are going on. And I'm not even going to go into the details of all these different global crises. And we've actually created an entire video um, that's, you know, about three times longer than this one which goes over all the whole laundry list of problems. Of, of course, I mean, it's only really just, you know, the primary five or so, but just kind of giving it a glance over to the iceberg of all the problems. So you're welcome to watch that video. In the context of um, the solutions, there are a whole variety of solutions as well. Um, and that video is even longer. So you're welcome to watch the solutions video as well. And um, it's almost three times longer than the problems video. So please do check those out if you'd like we feel like it's important to note that, um, you know, part of our solution is understanding the problems in a way that's clear, it's not fear-based, and allows each individual the power to decide for themselves, you know, what are the problems, what the potential solutions could be. So just you know, finalizing our understanding of unity theory is really the concept that it may be possible that having these fragmented single focus movements might not work and that maybe the only way to solve any one particular problem in global crisis is to solve all of them simultaneously through a unified movement and that's really what the basic theory of unity is um, and so i'm not going to go into like all the details um, but it is important to note to note that you know it is interlaced with you know dealing with multiple social movements individual paradigms and, and world views all need to be um you know, make space for all those different types of um, uh, contexts. So you can learn more about unity theory and all the other unity theories that are involved with it, but that's the, the key premise is that we really want to unite and collaborate and work together to improve our world. So in terms of what the unity network is and, and bringing this vision to a applicable, you know, infrastructure, what we are presenting is really a set of you know, structural systems and processes that can help support this variety of solutions that you can see in the solutions video. So um, just jumping in, the, the first one is the unity elections or the community elections. So in the context of having, you know, dozens and dozens, if not hundreds or more solutions, what we do is instead of saying like, we know what the right answer is, that this is the solution, that this is what's going to work. Instead, we're saying that there are dozens of possible solutions and through the community elections we prioritize all the solutions based on what you and other people feel that the best um, you know projects solutions ideas are and really that's like the foundation to building up our network is to you know not say any particular solution is bad or good but that we create a whole system of prioritization so that we're able to you know, go through all um, solutions that's potential equals and, and pull out the, the best ones for, for this particular time. So that's really, um, you know, the first step to taking these solutions and narrowing it down to some really core focuses. The second step is what we call Unity Day. And Unity Day is not just our global interdependence, democracy day, you know, take the streets, remind the governments, you know, who all of the people who, you know, the people in general are the ones who are in control of our society. But it's also about synchronization and synchronicity. You know, the, the goal would be 
that we utilize the annual day to create a rhythmic clock that happens every year and all the components that lead up to that annual day. For example, um, with our community elections, the annual election, the most important one, happens on Unity Day where we plan and basically decide on our focus for the next year. That all coincides with Unity Day. So Unity Day is really a synchronistic individual day that happens once a year and always continuous every year to kind of hold the whole you know, structure of solutions and implementation that we are working to experiment with. So from there, um, we have the parallel governance systems. This is our core structure. All right, and the parallel, this is a, you know, peoplesparallelgov.org. The people's parallel governance systems is really the core structure of the Unity Network. Uh, the general idea of this foundation is that, you know, we want to synchronize with Unity Day where we have, you know, localized, um, you know, conventions where people are coming together to, you know, reconsider their, their governance structures. But more importantly, we want to mirror all the different types of governing structures and ensure that those are also created for people. All right, so as an example, we'll just throw in the United States People's Parallel Congress in the United States um, uh, Congress. And what we know is that, you know, governments are failing us all across the world, and particularly in the United States, where the Congress currently has a 7 to 12 percent, maybe 50 percent max approval rating. I mean, this is dismal. Um, what we are going to be doing when we build these new parallel structures uh, of government systems is have no lobbyists, no corporate business influence representation, no decision making or voting based on money, no directly influence from the 0.001%, no influence from big banks and all, this, all, the, all the huge corporations. So the point here is that we are creating a space where actual normal everyday people can communicate and collaborate and work together um, to to represent and support actual normal everyday people. So in that context, all of these people who are volunteering to be in the people's parallel governance uh, structures and specifically the U.S. Congress, uh, parallel Congress um, will also run in the actual existing elections. And, and our goal is to eventually, um, you know, take out the entire slates of uh, the old system governance structures, which are based on corporate and money interests instead of uh, people in normal everyday working relationships. So to kind of to wrap it all up, um, the last component is the plan. You know, we want to take all these different solutions, all these different ideas, and, you know, build a plan that's comprehensive enough to deal with all segments and, and context of our society's uh, evolution. So, um, you know, we listed a few things of the, the core infrastructures, um, but really we're going to take the different solutions, prioritize them, and, and put it all into the comprehensive plan so that we can implement it. Um, in addition, the comprehensive plan is also a novel. And it's really cool because the novel itself basically gives a visual representation through the story and this picture story where people can actually see the process of what we're doing implemented in uh, society. So um, the comprehensive plan is, is a novel to visualize that as well as um, actually putting the step-by-step -step plan together so you can, people can see how that works. Our goal of implementing this plan is very simple. We want to ensure that all people have access to basic life necessities, you know, food, water, housing, clothing, you know, all the basic needs of, of life, um, and obviously opportunities for advancement. It's not enough just to barely be making it by, but all, all people also need opportunities of advancement. I'm not gonna go into all the details, but if you saw some of the problems and we're talking, you know, more than half of the world currently is not able to meet the basic life necessities, that needs to be dealt with immediately. So, um, you know, our goal is to improve the life experience of each individual on this planet so that, you know, as we implement these solutions, that everybody will be able to see the improvement in their own life. So that's really what we're trying to do. Um, we don't really want to uproot the current system. We want to simply transform it and so people have a existing understanding of the world around them and that that will stay that way and just improve um, their experience for it. So the key thing here is that you know, a lot of times solutions to our problem, people talk about individual projects, individual ideas, individual movements, individual fragmented concepts. You know, what we're trying to do is, is, is explain a new context of the Unity Network being a holding cell 
of systemic infrastructure to support a whole variety of potential solutions and evolution of society. If you think about it, you know, our current infrastructures are set up to quash and crush new ideas in many, many ways, um, including, you know, corporations and, and different types of uh, moneyed interests wanting to keep their hold on the, the monetary systems that they control and run. So what we need is a new alternative and parallel infrastructures that can support and institutionalize new ideas um, and projects because it is currently very, very difficult um, to do and bring those up. So that's kind of what we're doing and we feel like that's an important component to this whole evolution um, that we're trying to go through. Um, and so hopefully you'll be interested in supporting us in the work that we're doing. So we just want to quickly, you know, go over what, what in different ways you can support us. And so, you know, here's our Indiegogo page, which we're currently doing some crowd fundraising with. And um, if you go all the way to the bottom here, you have our Facebook link or Twitter link, you know, just clicking and, and liking our and following us is great. We also have the YouTube and, the, and our website. So, you know, that's definitely one way you can support us, you know, by voting and getting involved in the elections and the such. Um, from there, we would love you to volunteer. If you're interested in getting involved, um, we ask people to get involved in any transformative organization, but if you want to get involved in ours, um, we have the Get Involved link there as well, and you can ask questions and get involved from there. And we have a whole variety of, um, you know, different cool perks that you can get um, from little goodie bags and goodie boxes um, to full sponsorship packages. So, you know, please get involved as you will and as you may. And, you know, together, you know, my hope and our hope as a network is to make our world a better place uh, through uniting and working together to build uh, these solutions, you know, and, and understanding that all people are equal, that all ideas are equal, that everybody who comes to the play has something to offer. And as we build this network, we can build a structure that creates space for everybody to be themselves and have their own worldviews. So thank you for listening. And we certainly hope um, that you learned something from this and that you're interested in supporting and getting involved. Awesome. Have a wonderful day.